Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Dono for another Young Female Entrepreneurs Live and tonight's guest is Stacy of My Social Cloud. She's a 20 year old um, entrepreneur who counts Sir Richard Branson as one of her investors. So how did she manage to land uh, the, the, the mega Sir Richard Branson virgin empire sending people to space soon? Uh, as an investor, watch the entire show to find out. Tweet using the hashtag YFE chat and introduce yourself in the chat on YFELive.com. again my name is Jennifer Dono I'm your host for this evening's YFE chat live that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific 9 Eastern here at yfelive.com we're also tweeting on the hashtag YFE chat so be sure to introduce yourself and network with your peers that's one of the fun things that happens every Thursday night here is that you get to meet other people and be inspired by our speakers tonight's episode is brought to you by Ovali TV Ovali TV is the uh, live stream producer that makes all of this stuff happen I'm also an owner make sure that you go over and check over at and check out ovalight.tv to find out more about our company and how you could use live streaming with your brand today. And so before we welcome Stacy on, like I was like I was explaining that uh, Stacy is um, she's a 20 year old that owns a company she co-founded with her brother called My Social Cloud. It's something that protects um, I think their their tagline is protecting you online, something like that. I will have to get Stacy to totally correct me on it, but um, it's all about password keeping and organizing yourself, whether you're on your work computer, your your laptop, your desktop. Yes, we are here to keep you safe online. Hopefully that's still their tagline. I found that off Facebook photos. Um, <laughs> but we're going to bring her on soon because she has a really cool opportunity for the 20 and under crowd, which I know a lot of you are that are watching, especially on iTunes. I get emails from you all the time asking uh, if there's anything that you can do if you're under 21, and Stacy's got something really cool for you. So, but before we bring Stacy on, I wanna talk about what's happening here at YFE. So if we can show my desktop, we've got the latest at YFE that's presented by MailChimp. And MailChimp is the awesome sponsor of Young Female Entrepreneurs Live that uh, we also use our uh, mail, our email, newsletters from them it's fantastic we really love working with MailChimp so thanks you guys uh, so like I was saying tonight's guest is Stacy of mysocialcloud.com it's episode 63 if you're if you're listening or watching on iTunes please sh throw us a comment or a rating a like anything like that it'll make sure that the show gets boosted up there um, and then also we've got Nicole Longstreet Nicole I might be pronouncing your name wrong I hope I'm not um, so she's our guest next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on YFE Chat Live. Nicole is going to be, she's super awesome. She was game for my crazy little idea. I was like, let's have a fashion show. I want to do all sorts of cool things around fashion. What can we buy that's affordable going into summer? Uh, affordable but really awesome and shows off her brand. And also she's going to give us a little glimpse into what it means to be Nicole doing some vintage or um, thrift shopping really cool show next Thursday. And then Srinivas Rao, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right too, but he's Blogcast FM founder. Awesome, awesome network. Awesome podcaster. He's on following this directly at 6.30. So stay tuned at 6.30. Jules and Christina, who I believe I saw on the chat too. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. They are on the chat over there too. Yep. Hi, ladies. Hi, Jules. So they're going to be actually hosting that. And so it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned at 6.30 for that. So anyway, that was the latest from uh, YFE presented by MailChimp. Make sure that you sign up for our mailing list at yfe.me slash mailed it. All right. So let's go ahead and bring Stacy on. Oh, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much for all of the chats. Turn at Turnip Seeds is saying she needs Nicole's help. Hello, I think I wear the same thing on every show. I agree. I agree at Turnip Seeds. I, I could use the help as well. So let's talk about Stacy now. So like we were saying, Stacy had basically a tweet that changed her entire life. 
Uh, she's going to talk to us about that and also the opportunity. So let, without further ado, let's welcome Stacy onto YFE Chat Live. Hi, Stacy. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. So is it safe to say that a tweet changed your life? And yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been you've been actually written about in books. You've been a um, number of magazines have covered this, newspapers. But tell us about Twitter's role in landing Sir Richard Branson. Definitely. So I was working on my startup the summer after I graduated high school. And I had just started using Twitter, and one of the people that I followed was Sir Richard Branson because, of course, he's one of the best well-known entrepreneurs. And I saw a tweet come through my feed that said, come join me in Miami for intimate cocktails, donate $2,000 to charity. And then there was an email address um, that was in the next tweet. And so I took the email address and I emailed and I was like, hey, I'm not old enough to drink cocktails legally in the United States, but I would love to fly to Miami and meet Richard Branson. And I got an email back saying, hey, if you donate $2,000, you can fly cross country and be here in 48 hours and meet him over the course of two nights. And so my brother and I jumped on the opportunity. We both borrowed money from our parents and donated $4,000 and then flew to Miami. Um, we were able to meet Richard Branson. And just about a month later, he and another guy, Jerry Murdoch, invested in our company. Well, um... Oh, is my mic up now? <laughs> I'm saying that's that's really crazy as far as that goes. Um, so tell us about what My Social Cloud is, first of all, Wh why you started it and what it is that it does. Yeah, so My Social Cloud is an online password vault. And so we started because my brother had an Excel spreadsheet with all his usernames and passwords, and his computer crashed, and he lost all of that info. And so then we decided, you know, all of this stuff should be easily accessible online so that even if, you know, someone has to give me a loaner computer or if I'm just not at my regular computer, I still have access to all my stuff. So we created an online password manager and password vault that stores all of your passwords and auto-logs you into everything online. Okay, and just for a reminder for everyone that's in the chat, you are 20 years old, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how all of this has happened for you and how um, you both got started. How old is your brother? He's 22. He's 22, okay. So um, now being a 20-year-old entrepreneur, you've actually, I think you started off in Arizona, right? That's where you're originally from? Yeah. And then you bounced over to New York? So we, my brother and I were born and raised in Arizona. Then my brother went to USC, and so right after I graduated high school, I moved out to Los Angeles so that we could kind of be near his college. And then, so we started the company there, and then I moved to New York for one year to go to NYU, and then I moved back to Los Angeles to work on the company after I decided to stop NYU for a bit. And then we just recently moved up to San Francisco. Now, okay, so I heard this story, and I don't know if you're willing to share this on the live stream, but uh, can you tell us about the first apartment you, you rented in Los Angeles and what your parents' reaction was to that? Yeah, so our first apartment was in South Central LA, which, if anyone's familiar with the area, is not a good area. Um, there were, like, bars on all of the windows, and the doors had, like, triple locks on them to make sure that people were safe. Um, and my brother and I were sleeping on a couch and an air mattress, and it was just, uh, I look back at pictures and it was not like moving from home to something that wasn't very much feeling like home at all. But um, it was, I guess, a good learning experience and yeah. humbling experience. <laughs> Seriously. And so you, you, you basically, you know, deferred college. You said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this experience and go start this new experience, which is probably a shocker for your parents, first of all. And then you move over to Los Angeles. Are, are your parents supportive or are they... Or are they kind of more of the cautious, just make sure you're, you know what you're doing, Stacy? Yeah, so my parents are very cautious. They always want, every time I talk to them, they're like, so when are you going back to college? When are you going to get that degree? Um, they're supportive of us, and they, they like that we're working on the business, and they're happy for us, and they're glad that Richard Branson invested, and that eased things a little bit. That's um, pretty crazy at cocktails, but, at cocktail networking or whatever, at cocktail parties. I bet your parents are, oh, yeah, my daughter, you know, one parent's talking about how their <laughs> kid just graduated, and the other one, your parents are saying, oh, Sir Richard Branson invested in my daughter's company. So what do you do What do you do you uh, when you hear that kind of, um, the, it's not really negative advice or, you know, negative, You what are you doing with your life, Stacy? but it's more of a just make sure that you're considering all options type of advice. 
Uh, what do you do with that? Do you Are you able to come back at them and say, I'm confident in what I'm doing? Or do you have moments of self-doubt? What does that look like? Um, for the most part, I'm confident. I think things have been going extremely well. In the beginning, it was a little tougher because when you're just starting out, you know, it's it's hard to be confident in something when even though you're very passionate about it, you still have to convince the rest of the world that it's, you know, worth their time and worth their eyeballs and you're kind of throwing your whole life on the line to do something. Um, but, I mean, I think everyone that's an entrepreneur knows you have ups and downs, but hopefully more ups than downs and yeah, I've been seriously. lucky with that, so. Yeah, you've had a lot of ups and now, so since we're talking about the college experience and whether or not your parents are, um, too impressed or too happy that you're going this route. You really did. I mean, looking through the photos on Facebook, you kind of did have like a quasi college experience with um, my social cloud. You have, I mean, there's images of of uh, beach parties of like I don't know if they're keggers or what they are in your offices, and um, these this uh, I think it's like a free to use bike or rent a bike that has my social cloud on it. So. With that, why have you focused it? Why have you focused on college campuses? What's the strategy behind that? Yeah, so for my brother and I being college students, when we started my social cloud, it was a lot easier for us to spread the words because our word through college campuses because our network was there. So we could go to all of our friends and they're all excited because they're like, oh, you're going to be the next Mark Zuckerberg or whatever. And um, so everyone's really kind of supportive and rallying around that. And that was the easiest channel for us to spread the word initially um, was to just tell our friends and have it snowball from there. That makes total sense. Now, are you planning on branching out at all as far as other markets going into um, some, I don't know, different areas? What's the plan of attack for that? Definitely. So we're moving in, into the enterprise space right now. So signing on companies to manage all their usernames and passwords. Wow, that's incredible. Congratulations. That's a big space to get into. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so now, uh, since let's back up a step with the college campuses. There's a number of women on here that I don't know. Um, I'm sure a lot of their products and services could, uh, could appeal to the college market. Do you have any advice for them as far as making sure that they really reach that demographic and make an impact on them if they are marketing to college kids? Yeah, so I guess the biggest thing is to be unique because being a college kid, you get bombarded with advertisements all the time. And so you mentioned like seeing the, the bike with our logo on there. That's actually a company, an advertising company called Free Bike Project. And that's awesome because they sign on college kids to ride those bikes with advertisements around the college campuses. And stuff like that that's unique stands out and, you know, sets your brand apart from every other brand that's on the campus that's just putting up flyers and oh, stuff. that's cool. And what was the, the URL again for that? Freebikeproject.com. Cool. So um, along with the bikes, you do do a lot of in-person or offline marketing is, is there a reason for that since you are, I mean, you're absolutely an online company. It's not, I mean, there's no other way around it. So what's right. the reason for the offline stuff? I think offline creates a better community for us. Um, our product, you know, storing usernames and passwords, is something that's largely based off of trust, if people will do it or not, um, and how like secure they feel and safe they feel. Um, and so for us, it's important to be extremely transparent and to go out and meet these people and, you know, talk about, talk with these people that are using our product about it and about its security and just having that one on one interaction so that they never feel like they're distanced from us. All right, and I should say, um, for anyone that is joining now, we're speaking with Stacy of MySocialCloud.com. We're going to come up and speak about uh, an opportunity for the 20 and under crowd in just a moment. If you have a question for Stacy, make sure that you chat it in, and I will make sure to to uh, read it off to her. Uh, but before we get into the opportunity for the 20 and under, as far as uh, the going back with the marketing pieces, have you had any real marketing fails, something that you tried out, maybe put money behind or put a lot of time behind and it just didn't really work out for whatever reason? Hmm. So I guess, you know, in the beginning we tried things like doing flyers and doing postcards and even doing some little, um, I don't know, note cards and like putting those around campuses and, and putting them up just in the city and in coffee shops and stuff. And that didn't really work for us. And so 
it's not like a huge fail, I guess, but it's something that we definitely spent money and time on and didn't work out very well. Well, and I think that's, I think it's a good lesson to look at, you know, when I look at my social cloud, I think everything is awesome. You guys do, your marketing is spot on. It's a fun company, yet it does seem something that would keep me safe. Uh, so it's a good lesson for everyone. But on the t- on the subject of safety, now that's a pretty big deal to be 20 years old and to be the safeguard of a number of college kids' uh, passwords. But also, if you're getting into enterprise, I mean, those are that's yeah. that's worth billions of dollars. That's I mean, that's crazy. Those passwords. So how what does what does security look like for you, and how do you manage that? Yeah, so everything on our site is encrypted in a way that everyone who has an account, their password to our site is the key to their encryption code. Um, So that means that, you know, I can't, I don't even have the encryption code because you know the password to your account, whereas I don't. Um, And so it's, it's, convincing people and showing people who know nothing about security that that's how we are secure and then on our end you know hiring the best people in the industry to keep it secure getting constant security audits from larger corporations um, and just contracting out these kids that are 15 years old that sit in their basements and hack all day Um, and so it's kind of that two-pronged approach of you know making sure everything on our end is secure with all these experts and then um, educating people on what online security is and showing them in kind of a way that they can understand that we're safe. Do you have a backup plan for you know the the what ifs or what if something went totally wrong and passwords were exposed. Do you have a plan that's set, that's put in place? Do you have any advice for people as far as you know that what that what if scenario and how to handle that? As, you know, in terms of service and also for like public relations. Yeah, definitely. In terms of service, I mean, if something's gonna happen, then you've got to make sure that you know we're a security company and our team is available twenty four seven, so that you know. God forbid something goes wrong, nothing could go wrong, but if it did, um, those people are on call all the time and can get up and fix it. Um, and then from just a user standpoint, it's you know making sure that your, your social media, um, you have kind of, not templates, but maybe a little bit like, you know, what are we gonna tweet about? What's our press release gonna say? Um, how are we gonna handle these situations based off of what happens and who do you notify first? Um, do you notify you know your users first, or do you notify the press so that it gets widespread? Um, just having these things in place so that you know what you want to do as a company first. Well, and how did you ha- put those things in place? Did you meet with a lawyer, or is that something you and your team really just sat down and said, let's talk about all the what ifs and put it down on paper? Yeah. So at first, we sat down as a team and said, you know, we've got to have these documents just in case. Um, and then we sat down with a lawyer, and our lawyer helped us um, go through it all and say, you know these are the things that you need to include or these are the things that you shouldn't include and um, just kind of sifting through all that information and legal jargon. It's a good thing to have those things um, well in advance. I mean, you see, I think there was something about, and I don't think this really um, this really is relevant, but there was that social media thing that everyone was talking about with the restaurant owners that did some kind yeah. of crazy thing on their page. And you always see little things like that. Even the small things, it's nice to have a plan for the, the what ifs. Definitely. So let's start talking about the $2 billion under 20 project because this is a big deal right now. And especially Time Magazine just came out with another silly cover. I don't know if you got to check it out or anyone on the chat. Um, it has a, you know, a, a millennium, a millennial <laughs> um, on the cover of Time Magazine and basically saying that millennials are lazy. And so what you're doing is um, you're actually pulling together a number of awesome millennials, 20 and unders, and highlighting their stories. Can you tell us about the the 2 Billion Under 20 project? Definitely. So 2 Billion Under 20 is a book that I'm working on with another kid named Jared Kleinert. And we're compiling stories from anywhere from 50 to 75 um, young adults or anyone who's under 20, I guess, who has an amazing story to tell, either about you know companies that they've started, personal hardships that they've overcome, um, or just experiences that they've had that are unique from other people. And so we're, compi- we're compiling all these stories into a book. 
Um, and then we're hopefully going to publish it and we're creating a little bit of a community around it too. So getting people involved who either want to write in the book, who can go to www.2billionunder20.com and submit their story or just people that, you know, have an itch to do something great and impact the world positively. Um, we're just inviting all these people in to this under 20 group, um, and telling them to get involved and discuss ideas and, um, make the world a better place. Okay, so what if someone is 20 years old and turning 21 soon? Can they still get involved? They can, because I am involved, and that's the boat that I am in. <laughs> so when are you turning 21? In September, so oh. I've got a couple months. <laughs> How fun! That'll be a fun party for Stacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so now, you've been, I mean, you've been interviewed in countless, like we were talking about with the Richard Branson piece, you are all over the press, and your age is really cited in a number of the pieces that are written about you. This, you know, 19-year-old, 20-year-old. Yeah, this this story right here that we're showing, Richard Branson gave 400000 to 18-year-old. Uh, so it's really been highlighted, and I think it's awesome that you're actually showing, okay, there's a lot of other people that are equally as awesome um, as myself. Why did you choose to, why now? I mean, you have, you have a startup going on, you... You're in and out of college. You're, you've, I'm sure you're dating and you have friends. Why, why do the book now? Yeah, I think that you know, for younger people, it's easier to resonate with younger people. And I feel like once I get, you know, if I'm 30 and I say, hey, I want to do a book for under 20, then I'm not going to be as tied into that group as I am now. And so it's easier now that I have a ton of friends and I see how awesome they are and I'm really motivated to write this book since since I have had a lot of press and I want other people to have the same, same opportunities um, and I want other people to share their story too and since I'm tied into that group now um, I feel like it's the best time to do that now. Very cool. Now, so before I let you go, since we are talking about press, is there any advice for that you would give people, whether they're 20 and under or of any age, in getting mentioned in the press? Is there anything specific that's really worked well for you, or do people just kind of find you online? I would say catchy email subject titles is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, I always, any email that I want to get like press for, I always make it 18 year old, um, a million dollars from Richard Branson Twitter or something like that where, you know, if someone's reading that and they're in the press, that's like the perfect story summed up into, you know, 10 words or something that they can read right in their inbox. Um, so just catchy email subject titles. No, that's great advice. Now, do you cold email the people in the press, I'm assuming? Yeah, so when I started out, I did. Um, now a lot of people contact me, but I think to get the ball rolling, it's best to just, I picked up the phone all the time. I emailed all the time. Um, I even like reached out to people on Twitter and was like, hey, could I DM you? Could you follow me so that I can message you? Um, just any way that I, if I knew I wanted to get an article written from someone, I found a way to contact them. Very cool. I think that's great to know that uh, people that actually have been in the press, that they too have to go after it a little bit, especially in the beginning. So, Stacy, is there any advice that you want to leave people before we let you go? Any, um, any entrepreneurial words of wisdom or motivation, keep going, that kind of thing? Um, I would say definitely, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. And don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help if you guys need it. Um, I'm always open. I know a lot of entrepreneurs are always open to giving out advice and helping um, in any way that we can so don't be afraid to reach out to people and yeah keep going and do amazing things see I think stories like yours are so inspiring where just taking take, having the courage to just reach out to someone whether it's a tweet to to the virgin uh, you know billionaire or if it's it's sending a cold email out it's all about just kind of swallowing your pride and going out there and doing something. So it's great to have you on, Stacey. Thank you so much for being on YFE Chat Live. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, and before we uh, before you leave, <laughs> where can people find you online? Okay, so you can find me on Twitter, which is at Stacey Ferreira, or you can add me on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash the Stacey Ferreira. Um, and any other social media that you find me on, I'm probably on just about every network, but I check Facebook and Twitter the most. All right. So.
Perfect. Well, hopefully people will reach out to you, especially on Twitter, ask you questions, something about that. But Stacey, thank you again for being on YFE Chat Live. Yeah, thank you. So we were just watching Stacey Ferrer of MySocialCloud.com. She's coming out with the 2 Billion Under 20 project. So make sure that you follow her on Twitter so you can stay in, in, um, in the know with what's going on with that. And make sure that you submit your story if you're 20 or under. Corey at Corey Freeman. I hope you'll do that too. Um, but So next Thursday, again, we've got Nicole of The Wardrobe Code on at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. It's going to be a really entertaining show. It's going to be fashion... It's going to be a virtual fashion show, virtual fashion funness. So <laughs> show up next Thursday. Make sure that you sign up for Mailed It um, and to get our email updates. Coming up next on YFELive.com is a special event. It's Bootstrap Book Club. It's a live stream featuring Srinivas Rayo and Jules Taggart and Christina Foyt. Hopefully I pronounced everyone's names right. Uh, so it, it, thank you so much for coming live. If you have time or definitely stick around for the Bootstrap Book Club. Otherwise, I'll see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. Civic, 9 Eastern.